when the policeman came to tell me that they'd found Emma's body, I had this huge breath. And now I feel as if I can breathe again. A much-loved daughter, a girl with golden hair who adored horses and rainy days. Losing her sister to cancer led Emma Caldwell to heroin. Sex work to fund that addiction exposed her to a world her parents knew nothing about and to her killer. For the mother who never gave up, the guilty verdict brought no joy or elation. Margaret Caldwell praised all those who came forward to make justice possible, but condemned the failings of the original inquiry. Margaret believes that officers systematically sabotaged an investigation into Packer for a decade and have blood on their hands. For far too long, they have remained in the shadows but must now answer for their betrayal. Today, Margaret Caldwell calls on the Scottish Government to order an independent judge-led public inquiry into what went wrong. Within minutes of a guilty verdict, an apology. Emma Caldwell, her family and many other victims were let down by policing in 2005. For that, we are sorry. A significant number of women and girls who showed remarkable courage to speak up at that time also did not get the justice and support they needed and deserved from Strathclyde Police. Tell me your involvement relating to the rape and murder of Emma Caldwell. No problem. Ian Packer has been jailed for at least 36 years after being found guilty of murdering Emma Caldwell and 32 additional charges of physical and sexual violence against 22 different women dating back to 1990. The youngest he raped was 15 years old. Over more than 25 years, you pursued a campaign of violence and appalling sexual mistreatment of a very large number of women. You have caused great harm to so many people as you indulged your pathologically selfish and brutal sexual desires. The women involved resisted and protested, but you would not listen. The trauma you caused has led to suffering which has endured for decades. Did you kill Emma? No, I never. The denials of a murderer. I could look you in the eye and say no, I had nothing to do with it whatsoever. I'm not a violent person. The lies told by Ian Packer in a BBC documentary have finally caught up with him. Like Emma, many of Packer's victims worked in Glasgow's red light district, which was also known as the drag. Two described how this prolific user of sex workers left them fearing for their lives. One placed his name in what was called a beware book to warn others after a terrifying assault and abduction. I was really scared when he started driving off. He was grabbing me and I thought he was going to hit me. I jumped out of the lights and ran hell for leather. I'm always looking over my shoulder now. Knowing he will never walk the streets again helps. He's a danger to all women. He was choking me. I told him to stop, but he ignored me. Couldn't breathe. I went in his van a lot and he did ask me to go for a drive out of the city, but I always refused. Several women were taken by Packer in his van to a place they described as being in the middle of nowhere. Jurors traced the 40-mile journey Emma would have taken with her killer to Limefield Woods in South Lanarkshire. Packer had claimed he found this remote spot by chance and it was used by others. It's like they've just found a dead body. It looks down, it's on the top half, it looks naked. It's, no, it's, it's face down, blonde, blonde hair, I think. Emma's body was discovered by a dog walker five weeks after she had disappeared. She had been strangled. With no blood, DNA or fingerprints, it was soil recovered from the footwell of Ian Packer's van that proved to be the most damning piece of evidence. It was a 97% match with samples taken from the molehill next to where Emma Lee. Almost 19 years on, Ian Packer, handcuffed to a guard, was using a walking stick when he was brought back to these woods. He was wearing a face mask as jurors walked past him while they viewed this sight during this trial. He remained impassive as he stood by the ditch where he had dumped Emma's body. It was a journalist that phoned me and told me that her body had been found. 
I just broke. Soul destroy. Because that was when I really thought that we could have saved. She did want to go into rehab. She, she was did. planning. She was desperate. Desperate to get into a rehab. But Emma never got the chance to live her life. It was taken away from her. Anne McElveen ran a charity called Salt and Light, and its bus was a fixture on the drag. It was a place of safety when fear spread following Emma's murder. Ian Packer was said to be besotted with the 27-year-old. It was not ever seen his picture, and I thought, he came to the bus. He came to the bus for lasses. She told me she was frightened of somebody, but she never gave me a name. She says he'll no leave me alone. And I told the police that. Seven statements I gave. Can I have your name? Retired detectives believe Police Scotland and the Crown Office wasted time and money pursuing the wrong suspects and that they had the evidence to convict Ian Packer for almost two decades. This was a murder inquiry running two parallel operations, codenamed Grail and Guard. Davy Barr was part of the intelligence-led Operation Grail. Over months, Packer gave six voluntary statements. By the time he spoke to Davy Barr, his story had changed. Not only did he know Emma, he had taken her to Woods in Lanarkshire. Packer agreed to go with police to this location in 2007. Emma's body was found just yards away from where he told detectives to park. He took us down into the fir trees and there was still a kind of shrine, which I hadn't seen. And it was kind of, you kind of get a shiver up your, you know, it was like, wow. If we had dealt with him as a suspect, we would probably get the truth from him. That was my feeling. I'm pretty sure he was on his way to admitting what he'd done. Ian Packer remained a witness, not a suspect at this time. This was because Operation Guard was focused on a group of Turkish men. One of them had made the last call to Emma's mobile. Surveillance set up in a Glasgow cafe produced what police believed were tapes of incriminating conversations. Four men were arrested in 2007 but the quality of the evidence was challenged and the case collapsed. For the police to evolve, they need to learn by their mistakes. And the mistakes made in that inquiry were inexcusable, to be honest with you. We had the ability to solve that murder without covert inquiries, and Operation Grail solved that. And we were just, we were told to forget all that. Emma's father died the day after he was told no further legal proceedings were planned. In 2015, the mishandled investigation and the man dubbed the forgotten suspect made headlines. The evidence pointing at Ian Packer seemed to be really very compelling in attempting to shore that up and go out to speak to people who knew him. It, it was very quickly fortified. There was one door which I knocked uh, to attempt to identify a picture that we'd taken of Ian Packer. Uh, a woman looked at it and closed the door on me uh, straight away and later got a message back to me telling me that the reason she'd done that was that she was sick on the spot at seeing a picture of him again. It was absolutely clear that this is a person who frightened women. A hunt was launched to find the newspaper's sources and while the murder case was reopened, it was another seven years before Ian Packer was arrested. The reinvestigation has been described as extremely challenging and Scotland's largest police inquiry of recent times. Ian Packer showed little emotion as jurors returned guilty after guilty verdicts. Emma's family sobbed. Survivors were also in tears. Six of the women Packer preyed upon died before this case came to trial. He's a monster. Absolute monster. Emma's been in my thoughts for 15 plus years. Thank you, everyone. I'm so proud there, Mum. She never gave up.